Hello, our friends. We're back again like a bad penny. Oh, welcome back for more punishment, guys. Love it that you're here. Or gum on the bottom of your shoe. Something like a sticky booger or something like that? Yeah, a sticky yeah. booger and ant, ant in the pants, you know. Yeah, white on rice. White on rice. This was our Patreon exclusive today, something big F-A-R-M-A doesn't want you to know about. Oh, yeah, it's it's been crazy, and you're hearing a lot from us because while we're able to, we're going to keep coming your way and, and bringing you whatever information we can because these are times of rapid change. And we did this one that was a Patreon exclusive a few days before. Actually, it's yesterday. <laughs> time of time is flying, guys. Here we go. Let's go right to the to the biggest story right here. Well, one of the biggest stories actually. This is either a chemical plant. Uh, this is what some are calling a chemical plant. As you can see, this is a massive explosion. Look at this. Shelter in place is issued. This is Conyers, Georgia, by the way. Conyers, Georgia. Nothing to see here. Just a bio lab. Okay, chemical plant or bio lab or is it both? Which is it? All the above? Well, in Georgia and on fire, sending massive plumes of smoke into the sky right before, yeah, you know, right before a certain selective process happens. So, chemical plant fire in Conyers, Georgia, shelter in place ordered, evacuations, EPA, Georgia EPD monitoring air quality to see if it's toxic, fire they say is under control, and uh, when you go and look on Brave, it gives you this, Conyers chemical plant biolab. Well, okay, so I guess it is all the above, right? Hmm, Old Covington Highway in Conyers. They say the cause was a, just a sprinkler head malfunction at 5 a.m., causing water to mix with a water-reactive chemical, producing a plume of chemicals. Then the fire initially was contained to the roof, eventually reignited, prompting a hard evacuation of residents in the immediate area. Road closures, Interstate I-20 shut down in both directions, a large portion of Conyers was evacuated. Residents advised to shelter in place or evacuate their homes. And again, they're sampling uh, the air. BioLab is a swimming pool and spa water care division of KIK Consumer Products based in Lawrenceville, Georgia. This is the third incident of this magnitude at the plant in seven years. I was going to say, I'm getting deja vu here. I could swear it was the same place before. So what's really going on? And so as of la latest reports, and this was just moments ago, the fire is being contained. Efforts are underway to remove pallets of water reactive chemical from the plant. Residents are still advised to continue sheltering in place until further notice. And in case you're wondering exactly where Conyers is, this, this is where Conyers is. Um, basically a little east of Atlanta. You have I-20, which um, goes from Columbia to Atlanta and then uh, continues on. It, it's a major thoroughfare. In fact, it, if you follow it, it'll keep heading westward <clears throat> and eventually I-10, I-20 merge. Uh, I-40 up here is another major east-west uh, route across the country. I mean, these are major, major routes. As you guys know, Asheville is just a mess right now, and I-40 is blocked off because it's not there anymore <laughs> with all the craziness, and we're going to update that as well. Um, you know, again, if you wanted to create some issues for moving around resources before any sort of major incident takes place, uh, you would definitely think uh, that these would be thoroughfares that would be targeted. Yeah, I mean, this is just awful. It's like, what's what's going to come next? Um, we have to keep an eye on things, and this is the time where, you know, you just do your best to be ready for whatever. A lot of people in Asheville really are struggling to such a huge degree, and now we have this, and we don't know what's going to get leaked with this. I mean, I, I don't know, but my hands are already itching. That's not a good sign. There's something not right there. It, it makes me wonder 
these chemicals what is it going to do to people's skin is that itching and and swelling is that going to be part of what's going on and then is that going to spread and how is that going to spread is it going to go in the water um there's a lot that they are doing to uh upset the entire country and these are the things that we prepare for um am i the only one that sees a couple of things in this photo i mean <laughs> you see them too right i mean does that not look like a demonic face and this look like a look at eye eye nose mouth i i, I just did this now and just looked because th this is israel and this is yemen so israel is bombarding yemen massively right here and what do we see it looks like two skulls doesn't it not uh yeah to me it does too yeah I, you know, that was just a random something told me to go and take a peek okay and they also just bombed a village in lebanon uh yeah there's obviously something well underway i they don't want you knowing or talking about the greater is Ra L project, which you could see it, you know, described in the Bible from the Nile all the way to the Euphrates, all the way up into Syria, basically to Turkey, all the way down in, you know, halfway down through um, Saudi Arabia. This is what you're watching man be manifested right now in these times. Uh, multiple 18-wheelers having their tires slashed in West Tennessee off of I-40 can barely find anyone talking about it except for a few local news channels. And, by the way, there is a pending port strike on the 1st. So, in case you were wondering, it's going to be awful hard, again, to get product through certain areas in the eastern, southeastern um, United States. There are so many people without anything right now in uh, western North Carolina. It's just a mess. This person says, my, my wife's cousin has two of the four flatbeds. He's going to Asheville, loaded with pallets of water. You know, I love how people will just drop everything and go and help others. That is so beautiful. Um, if you have a truck, don't wait on FEMA. You know, go to your local Walmart, ask them to donate items, etc. Because it's bad there. Um, our family member Leah wrote back, and she is in Waynesville, which is Waynesville is maybe 25 minutes west of Asheville, and you know that was one of our favorite places, and uh, we used to go to Waynesville all the time. She says, bad flood damage, apocalyptic. City of Waynesville has no power, municipal water out, no power to homes or businesses, no phone, no internet, no 911, no gasoline, roads in and out of town completely uh, out or blocked by debris, countywide curfew, army trucks, National Guard all over. She says over a thousand people missing. Now, I, I, I don't know where she's getting that from. I haven't talked to her on the phone. We've just communicated via text. But over a thousand people missing, you got to wonder because we all heard things like this in Katrina and Harvey, and then you never really get official numbers. Um, or the numbers that officially come just seem very odd and low. Uh, cattle roaming, loose, no stores open, only 10 people at a time allowed into the grocery store, cash only. So, you know, if you want to pay with Bitcoin, it ain't going to work. <laughs> cash only. There's no power. This is what we were talking about. Uh, we can go to the police department to use their Wi-Fi, which is what I'm doing to get this text out. So, yeah, there you go. That's a situation from Waynesville, um, North Carolina. Crazy. This guy's from Helene. Uh, you know, he's from North Carolina as well, and they're talking about Hurricane Helene. Uh, you know, same thing. It's just crazy. It, it's, it really is post-apocalyptic in the Appalachian Mountains in this area right now. Um, everything is just, you know, there's just no 
no idea when things can go back to normal or if there ever will be a, a normal like there was because these times are really about great change uh, yeah they they are and um what do you do you know i mean you do what you can and if you're not in a position where you can actually go help then you know you send the energy that you can and um they are uh, working on getting a starlink hub so that people have something you know something and what did you say and i mean you know, yeah cindy got from the guides this everything that we're going through in this period is going to be about new technology which is going to be completely um wireless no infrastructure that we see uh, like even you know a lot of things that we've taken for granted over the years we're going to all new technology and Starlink is paving the way. Of course, Elon is. Yeah, I mean, he is, you know, but what do you say? Um, people are desperate to be online right now. They're desperate to make connections to to connect with their loved ones. So it's not like you can say bad things about it. But at the same time, we knew that this was coming and it does show the deliberate nature of it all what I, what warms my heart really is all the people coming together to to help each other so i like to stay focused on that um even if we are even if this is happening to pave the way for different technologies ai technologies um people are helping each other so let's just keep with that uh positive thought more than half of uk government nutrition advisors paid for by the food companies of course you know, this is, again, how you get the inverted pyramids, uh, food pyramids and the like. It, it shouldn't really be surprising. I just wanted to share this because, you know, to the flat earthers out there, um, that, you know, they understand something's wrong with the narrative. This is supposed to be uh, Kepler 218b, which is a planet they say is many more times massive than Earth, a much larger planet. But what they don't want to tell you is that this relationship here, like, you know, this is Earth, this is that planet. In reality, this is Earth. And this is what they say Earth is. Earth is much bigger than what they tell us. So when you look at the entirety of the land sur surfaces on Earth, and instead you put them into, say, the polar region, all of them could fit into, say, our polar region. And then you take your measurements and you say, you know, there's just, it's flat. Well, it's not flat. It's just a lot bigger than what they tell you. Why would they do that? Because a lot of the controllers are in these other areas. <laughs> they don't want you knowing where they are and where other civilizations are. Because there are other civilizations right here on the planet with us. We are just in a very, very small kind of quarantine zone. We do need to be in a quarantine zone until we reach a certain frequency. And once we reach that certain frequency, we will be able to go to these other areas where they are very pristine. They are very pure. Uh, this is how Earth recoups herself. But yes, I mean, there's a lot of changes going on. When are we going to actually know about these changes? And when are they going to be as plain as the palm of my hand i i don't know but i do feel that for every single person who works on raising their frequency we are that much closer to having access to a new earth well i would venture to guess from what we know about the june solstice thing um that we should have some sort of real good in inclination about which way this is going to go in maybe nine months time or so well, I, you know, I don't know, because if we're not reaching that frequency, it's not like anybody's going to tell us anything. <laughs> so, so I mean, it's just, it's something that we all have to reach and strive for and know and understand that the higher we go in frequency, the more access we are going to have to a new earth. That's um, as, as simple as I can put it. Yes, absolutely. So again, you know, work on that spiritual path every single day adopt a spiritual lifestyle because again what does that look like well that just means you know prioritizing your inner peace have to prioritize the inner peace i mean everything that we see going on on the planet is enough to enrage anyone and there's things that we can do with that anger to to help and actually protect other people with that anger besides destroy ourselves 
um, the controllers just want us angry so that our cells are going within and we're just, you know, really messing ourselves up. But in some people, just they have anger issues. But you can use that anger to help others. Absolutely. It's about redirection. It's about processing. It's about changing the way you view things. And we can all go up in frequency even with our passions where they're at. It's it's a matter of where we place them. Absolutely. Yeah, the times are going to be challenging, um, but at the same time, it takes a lot of compression and compressive forces to turn again, you know, charcoal into diamonds. It does, and, and that charcoal can really get pressed down pretty, pretty tight and be very, very uncomfortable. But you know what, when that diamond finally cracks out of it, um, then everything, all the pressure and all everything it becomes worth it because that diamond shines so bright. It's just incredible and amazing. And that's where so many of us are at. We are at that point of being compressed and we just, we have to sit through it and trust that there is uh, something good at the end of this. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.